Hello everybody and welcome back to Chartists. I'm your ginger gentleman Alan Case saying Merry Christmas. Alright, those of you who work in a mall probably know the drill by now. Halloween comes to pass and suddenly we're all inundated with non-stop Christmas songs. A few classics, a lot of covers, maybe one or two original tunes if we're lucky. And while we're on the topic, yes I know I'm stretching the word original here, but it's amazing how many artists are trying to write the brand new All I Want For Christmas Is You. But anyway, Christmas music is kind of fascinating, isn't it? It maintains physical album sales, it's only for one specific kind of people, and yet everybody has their favorites from all walks of life. You just can't live without consuming it at least a little. Look at the album charts, it's bursting with that crap. There are some re-entries, a couple of low-budget, low-profile classical interpretations, and a choice few Christmas albums released by some big-name star in pop or country or R&B. And again, this stuff sells! Admit it, you just got back from Target with some crappy Barbra Streisand Christmas album you're gonna foist on an older family member you hate, didn't you? Well, it's great that Kelly Clarkson gets to pad her resume and that Susan Boyle gets to feign importance again. Let's be blunt, it's all about the songs. And today we're going to be taking a look at the ultimate Christmas song to sit and debate. Yes, that's right. Maybe it's cold outside. Koi love story, Christmas rape anthem, exhibit A for the times for a different crowd. Where does it come from, and why do some people insist upon letting it return every year despite growing mountains of hatred for it? Well, let's tackle the first question. See this guy? This is Frank Lesser, a Tin Pan Alley songwriter who's best remembered today for his work on Guys and Dolls. Anyway, back in 1949, Lesser, now working in both stage and film, was writing songs for a mostly forgotten musical by the name of Neptune's Daughter, a rom-com about mistaken identity and women's swimsuit design. It was basically a flimsy excuse to look at women in bikinis. Full disclosure, I have not seen the film, but I can't say as though I'm very interested in a movie whose maximum amount of effort yielded Betty Garrett's character being named Betty Barrett. Anyway, Neptune's Daughter included several lesser compositions, most of which are either completely forgettable or questionably racist, but about halfway through the movie during a hilarious date between the two main characters, they start singing this. You know, on second thought... Yes? I really can't stay. But baby, it's cold outside. I've got to go but away. Baby, it's cold outside. This evening has been hoping that you drop so in. So very nice. I'll hold your hands. They're just like ice. My mom Woof. Feel that passion. Yeah, despite the constant counter-argument that this song is supposed to be super romantic, I can't really say as though Neptune's daughter is convincing me of that. Put some records on while I fall. The anyway, whereas some movie songs from that era took their sweet time becoming classics, Baby It's Cold Outside did not. 1949 alone saw the song get high-profile covers from the likes of Dinah Shore, Johnny Mercer, June Carter Cash, and Ella Fitzgerald. It didn't just enter the public consciousness, it was forced upon it. Why? Well, let's take a look at it. Really, Baby It's Cold Outside is probably one of Lesser's catchiest tunes. A nice, cheerful, mid-tempo song in the style of Call and Response. And who doesn't like Call and Response? It's like having a musical conversation without having to learn Italian. That said, the song is pretty strange for what it is. It's kind of a present tense story song with almost no wiggle room on the scenarios in which it could be slotted in. We Need a Little Christmas, for example, could have a musical sequence in basically any film. Ghostbusters could have it. But Baby It's Cold Outside just kind of always leads back to the end of a date night, and at that point your only choice is whether to make it romantic or funny. So on the one hand, I can understand why it's so popular with the public, who, let's face it, couldn't care less about lyrics if they called for a mall Santa genocide, but on the other hand, I'm not sure why it's so popular with performers. And let's be clear, it is really popular with them. The song is basically Baby's first Christmas duet. Glee covered it, Idol covered it, hell, the Duck Dynasty people covered it. I really can't stay. Cold outside. I've got to go away. It's bone chilling cold outside. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, it may be debatable to call it a duet, but it still exists. Baby It's Cold Outside is a weird rite of passage for singers looking to make a Christmas album. And I can sort of see why. It's catchy, it's simple, it's easy. The only drawback is that a lot of people hate it. Alright, enough stalling. Baby It's Cold Outside. Divisive gem or song about being a pushy creep to your date? While I'm not going to automatically say it's the latter, even getting down to the bare bones composition, it's kind of hard to deny that. For example, the two singing parts are labeled Wolf and Mouse on the sheet music. And side note, 
Wolf and mouse? Cat and mouse? Wolf and sheep? Wolf and cat, maybe, but... Wolf and mouse? Anyway, look, I'm decently sure Predator and Prey have been pretty cut and dry for a while, so the fact of their list like this is a little off-putting, to say the least. But even beyond that, the song is just a little... Blurred lines-ish? And before anyone says anything, it's kinda hard to ignore, and it's not all unusual to see artists making valiant attempts to fix the song in one way or another. One is changed in the lyrics. The neighbors oh, might think Maybe it's bad out there Say, was that a wink? No caps Maybe they'll add in a romantic talking segment or two. You're gonna miss me. I don't trust you. Didn't say you had to trust me. I just wanted you to stick around. I'm having a really good time. <laughs> But, probably the most popular one is to gender swap the roles. I've got to get home. But baby, it's freeze out there. Say let me go. Touch your knees out there. This is despite that concept both being a questionable improvement and not nearly as novel as people seem to think it is, seeing as they literally use that exact same concept in Neptune's Daughter. I ought to say no, no, senor. At least I'm going to say that I tried. What's the sense of hurting my pride? I really can't stay. Oh, baby, don't hold out, oh, baby. But it's cold outside. But it's my belief that down to the song's core, it's not really fixable in that sense. It basically has to be taken as is. Regardless of what's said or who's singing what to whom, Baby It's Cold Outside is either about keeping love alive in the face of the public's stringent, old-timey expectations, or it's about being a rude little snot who won't take no for an answer. And while case number one can make sense in context, especially if you keep it under a minute and a half, without that, it's just a mean song wearing the clothing of a sweet one, not the other way around. Even without the rapiness, it's just not possible to turn brazen disrespect into something that's romantic or particularly funny. Like, a lot of people pick on this line, Put some records on while I pour. The neighbors might think. Maybe it's bad out there. Say what's in this no drink. No caps to be had out there. Haha, uh -huh. date rape drug. Awkward turtle. But here's the thing. That line does have historical context. That was basically the old timey way of saying you can't have tequila because it makes you behave like a jerk. Which, by the way, isn't a thing. You're just a moron with an excuse. But the bit that doesn't really have any justifiable context is the one that's basically the entire thesis of the song. I simply must go. Baby, it's cold outside. The answer is but no. Baby, it's Boom! Right there. The answer is no. Put it back in your pants, buddy. She's got places to be. And yes, I do understand the point of the song is supposed to be that the mouse really wants to stay, but is just looking for an excuse first. But the fact of the matter is that there isn't a single dating concept that has aged worse than the soft no. And thinking of dating as going on the hunt is one of the most screwed up ways to look at courtship, period. Man, woman, gay, straight, if the answer is no, well, sorry. Grab a Playboy and try again tomorrow. And all this is kind of funny because supposedly Esther Williams once said that originally she and Montalban were supposed to sing a different song called Slow Boat to China, but got stuck with this at the last minute because it was considered less objectionable. I'd love to get you on a slow boat to China all to myself. So in other words, the all-time Christmas rape anthem was considered the safe song choice to go with in a movie who was basically the 1940s equivalent of softcore porn. Now to be fair to the song, it does actually have a decent history prior to Neptune's Daughter. Because, despite winning the Oscar because it was the 1940s and apparently the Academy Awards were way less pedantic back then, it wasn't actually written for the movie but about a half a decade prior for Lester to sing with his wife during parties. There's even a recording of the two of them performing it. I really can't but stay. But baby, it's cold outside. I've got to go but away. But baby, it's cold outside. This evening has so been so happy that you so dropped in. Very nice. I'll hold your hands. It was only after it began to catch on that Lester sold the song to MGM for them to use, and eventually found its way into Neptune's daughter. So it did spring from a legitimate romantic starting point. In fact, Lester's wife was pretty heartbroken over him selling it because she kind of thought it was their personal thing. So, yes, Baby It's Cold Outside does actually have its roots in a real relationship where that kind of playful banter is not so creepy. But, that does not put an end to the arguments that the song is lyrically dubious. Again, it's very contentious. I ban the song just to avoid the drunken rants. People clash on whether the song is creepy or romantic, and to be fair, I see the argument on both sides. But a lot of the arguments for the latter basically settle on historical context, and, well, that isn't all that relevant to the song today. Yes, there is historical context, but that only stretches so far. Nobody's trying to invent a time machine to browbeat Ray Charles out of performing it. 
It happened then, and that's the end of it. Historical context is a defense for past behavior. Maybe it's cold outside isn't bothersome because it exists, it's bothersome because people keep recording it. And record it they do! Megan Trainer has a version that she made this year that's literally charting right now. And I think that at the end of the day, that's the problem. It's just not a song that can be taken alone. Baby It's Cold Outside is a debatable classic. It can be sweet in the right context, sure, but there does need to be a context, and that's harder than it sounds. Are there good sounding versions? Sure. I like Lady Antebellum's version. Various Rutgers take is pretty decent. Like I said, it's catchy. But all that's about the record, not the song. And there are plenty of other songs that suck way worse that are far stronger because they don't need that extraneous. Christmas Time Is Here doesn't need any extraneous. My Grown Up Christmas List doesn't need any extraneous. Maybe It's Cold Outside does, and a lot of it. It's just not a song that's really built to be fired off in five minutes for some cheapo cash-in HSN Christmas album, and as long as people ignore that fact, it's always going to be an uncomfortable topic come the holiday season. Love it or hate it, it's just not as simple as you had to be there. Sorry. This has been Charnas with your ginger gentleman, Alan Case, saying goodnight and Merry Christmas.